Welcome to The Bo Show. It's my 150th episode. Stick around to the end of this show because I've got something fun for you. You know, you'd never think that I would focus a whole show on a laptop. But then again, there have been whole series and documentaries done about Hillary Clinton's email server. But this laptop is a special one and an important one because it's not just any old laptop. It belonged to Joe Biden's son, Hunter, who has proven to be a thorn in the presidential side. But the implications of this are enormous. In October of 2020, the New York Post obtained emails purportedly from Hunter's laptop that was dropped off at a repair shop in Wilmington, Delaware in 2019, only to be never retrieved again. The Post reported on the existence of these emails, but other corporate media outlets would not. Some verified emails involved a deal President Biden's son pursued with the CEFC China Energy conglomerate, for which he was paid nearly $5 million, according to the Washington Post. Other verified emails related to his work for the Ukrainian energy company Burisma Holdings, for which Hunter Biden was paid as much as $83,000 a month, or a million bucks a year. So these are pretty explosive realizations. But at that time in October of 2020, which was right before the election, the Washington Post fact checker feature said the paper has not been able to verify or authenticate these emails and said that there were, quote, fears that the emails could be part of a broader disinformation campaign by Russia, unquote. In addition to calling the emails unverified, they called the New York Post journalism sketchy. Jack Maxry gave a copy of the laptop hard drive to the Washington Post in June, so they had Matt Green, a Johns Hopkins University security researcher, and Jake Williams, a forensics expert and former national security agents operative, look into its veracity, who both authenticated it. Earlier in March, the New York Times admitted that it had received copies of emails from that same laptop that are now acknowledged to be true, as well as the federal tax probe into Hunter Biden. But the Times buried this acknowledgement of the Biden emails in the 24th paragraph of a 38 paragraph story that defended the fact that Hunter had paid a significant portion of his tax debt, making it harder for prosecutors. It has taken the Times and the Post this long to admit that the Hunter Biden laptop contents are real, something Senator Ron Johnson finds incredulous, and I do too. What's more, look at how they handled it, bearing the story in a larger story that is soft on Hunter's tax debt. Senator Johnson and Senator Chuck Grassley have been looking into Biden's business deals overseas. During a House Judiciary Committee meeting last week, Rep. Matt Gates entered a number of contents from this laptop into the congressional record. So why does all this matter? Well, let's examine this from the media perspective. Every media outlet has its own standards and practices. The New York Post was the first to report about this, but even Twitter removed a feature that would allow the Post story to be shared. This was obviously at a pivotal time because such information could be damning to Joe Biden's chance at the presidency. Then Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey told Congress that Twitter does not have a censuring feature and that the feature that removed the shareability was a mere process error and a mistake that won't happen again. Twitter locked the post out from posting anything for two weeks over the accusation that the post had used hacked information. So Twitter demanded that the Post delete the tweets, which they would not. So Twitter prevented the Post from tweeting. Facebook took a similar action with respect to this same story. At the same time, the Washington Post published a fake news story that Donald Trump had told Georgia's election leaders to, quote, find the fraud. That false story was not flagged by Twitter or Facebook in spite of its falsehood. Dorsey never admitted to Congress who at Twitter made this quote unquote process error, but I think we all know that for one, Dorsey knew about it, and two, this was no error. This was deliberate, an attempt to quash a damaging revelation about a presidential candidate's son. So in addition to social media trying to actively remove the shareability or even the posting of the information at all, the Washington Post and New York Times would not even investigate the veracity of the hard drive until just recently, over a year since the story was published. This would indicate that several major news outlets coordinating with social media giants actively worked in collusion to interfere in the election. The Democrats had pushed so hard 
that Russia had interfered in our election, especially with the now debunked Russia collusion narrative by Adam Schiff, that they were able to take that fear or alarm and use it as a weapon against an actually true story about Hunter Biden. So for one, we know that there is a horrific double standard when it comes to publishing news information. Media outlets themselves have published a myriad of false stories that they end up having to, well, either retract or correct. But social media, who is responsible for the virility of this information, does not censor or fact check any liberal media outlet stories, but clearly censored the New York Post's Hunter Biden story. And that is significant because information like that which America and the world should be privy to was silenced in order to ensure Americans would not be swayed by this info and perhaps not vote for Joe Biden. The very thing that all of them claimed to happen, which is election interference, was being perpetrated by these very same people. They're not in the news business. They're in the propaganda business. And here's another way that this impacted the election. Then Attorney General Bill Barr made a statement that special counsel John Durham's probe into the Russia investigation was not about Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, or Barack Obama. So the Washington Post, one of the outlets involved in all of this, seized on that and ran a big feature about it. Barr's statement was made in response to several Trump tweets that indicated that this probe might be looking into Russiagate as an Obama-era plot. However, Barr decided to remain silent when Biden claimed in the second presidential debate that the Hunter Biden laptop story came from a Russia disinformation campaign, which Barr knew to be deliberately false. Here's Barr. I was very disturbed during the debate when, when uh, candidate Biden lied to the American people about the laptop. He squarely confronted with the laptop and he suggested that it was Russian disinformation and pointed to the letter written by some intelligence people that was baseless, uh, which he knew was, was a lie. Barr believes this amounted to election interference, yet he remained entirely silent just after he had inserted himself and the DOJ in Trump's claim about the Durham investigation. Just days before that debate, Biden produced a statement from his own intelligence officials that said that the laptop story had, quote, all the earmarks of a Russian information operation, unquote. The media seized on that, of course, to try to buttress this case. But Bill Barr says that he knows those intelligence officials and knows that the statement to be a lie. At the time, the FBI had Hunter's laptop in its possession and was opening an investigation into possible money laundering and violations of the Foreign Agents Registration Act. On this laptop, it was revealed that Joe Biden had met with Hunter's Ukraine Burisma business partners just weeks before Biden demanded that the Ukrainian president fire the very prosecutor looking into Burisma. That was paying Hunter a million dollars a year. So not only did Barr keep Hunter's laptop a secret and stay silent when Joe lied about it in the debate, but he also made sure that the Hunter Biden probes would be kept hidden from the public in an effort to keep the DOJ out of campaign politics. Why is that relevant? Well, I'll tell you, according to the Media Research Center, 45% of Biden voters were unaware of the laptop and the damning information within. And 16% of voters would have changed their vote had they known this. Remember, that it was Hillary Clinton's accusation that Russia was colluding with Trump in 2016 that precipitated CIA Director John Brennan's investigation into it, thus dogging the entire Trump term. It continued, as we know, all throughout the Trump term and kept resurfacing. And then Biden, of course, made a similar claim about Hunter's laptop because he knew that Russia could be a great scapegoat. What we do know is that Joe and Hunter's business dealings in China and Ukraine have certainly had an impact especially in terms of foreign policy, when Biden was VP, all for the Biden family's personal gain. Did you know this? Did any of you Biden voters know this? Do you trust him? Do you see why he would be compromised in terms of the Russia-Ukraine conflict? He has used your taxpayer money as barter for his own personal gain. And he may have even provoked Putin into his invasion. But this is all about trust. Biden can't be trusted because he has lied to you. He lied about that laptop and he's been covering up for his son ever since. He was VP when Hillary made that false claim about Russia collusion. And then he stirred it up again to distract from the laptop. And then what about our intelligence agencies? How trustworthy are they? 
and Bill Barr? Was he a turncoat? Why was he silent when Biden lied, but felt the need to insert himself in the narrative when he needed to combat one of Trump's statements? And then the media, how can they be trusted? They suppressed this story and big tech helped them. This is all big collusion and you got duped. I wanna leave this episode with a song that I wrote back during the 2020 campaign. I was thinking about Joe and Hunter Biden and how they hide. I was in negotiations with the Trump campaign about using this song and it was going really well. And then abruptly it stopped. I, to this day, I don't know what happened, but they missed a major, major opportunity to tell this news story through song. So here it is, since you didn't see it in 2019. Hope you enjoy it. Hey Joe, what do you know? Don't sound like too much you're mumbling, stumbling And you're always out of touch 36 years as a senator Another eight SVP, but we don't know what you've done. It's plain as day to see that you're hiding Biden behind those Ray-Ban aviators. You're hiding Biden, you ain't no negotiator. You're MIA in the USA, and you keep going down. You think you want to be president, but you know where to be found. Well, or a portion of them will become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. What were you thinking with that crime bill in 94? And giving millions to Iran? Did you want to give some more? You're running from your record, but run by the DNC. And now you're running from your past, and even Terry Reid. Cause you're hiding Biden behind those Ray-Ban aviators. You're hiding Biden, you ain't no negotiator. You're MIA in the USA, you keep going down. You think you want to be president, but you know where to be found. Say the word Burisma without a little chill It's on a flu around the world Making dollar bills And here we thought that Hillary was an easy foe But maybe not as helpless as quid pro sleepy Joe You're hiding Biden behind those Ray-Ban aviators You're hiding Biden you ain't no negotiator You're MIA in the USA You keep going down On policy and diplomacy You know where to be found Nowhere to be found If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump Then you ain't black You ain't black you ain't black. And if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, you ain't black. And you ain't black. You ain't black. You ain't black. You ain't black. And if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, you ain't then you black. ain't black. You ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact I want something for my community.